is Kim and I am from Golden, British Columbia. Right now I'm kind of a woman of the wild. I come from all over, I think. Um, and a little bit about me. Um, I'm pretty multi-layered so since we don't have two hours. I'll try to condense it. Really, um, I'm an adventurer first and foremost um, and someone who has spent the last few years really um, on a journey of recovering from self-loathing and sharing that um, outward with the world and, and trying to um, use my experience to help eradicate self-loathing for all women everywhere. I started calling myself an adventurer instead of just a marketer or a writer or you know whatever I was doing at the time um, probably a few years ago when I really realized for myself I didn't feel that was defining me I didn't feel like my job defined who I was as a human and I felt I was so much more than just what I did nine to five and it really helped me um, kind of just formulate my own self-confidence to actually say well who am I really if I'm not if I'm not employed doing X, who am I? Who am I outside of work? And when I, what I came to was I'm an adventurer, pure and simple from my heart. That is who I am as a human. And I'm still an adventurer if I'm sitting here at my desk typing and doing work and, and you know, writing ad copy. I'm still an adventurer. And um, so, yeah, it's kind of been a few years that I've been doing that. And it feels so good because it's just right. It's the apt definition of me. It's so the story is really... Um, again, multi-layered, but, but really how I kind of evolved into creating Girl in the Wild from my own kind of place of self-loathing and then healing is really um, that I started to diarize um, on Instagram just my life and the things I was going through just because I needed an outlet with no purpose um, or kind of end game or expectations. I just had to get it out there. And what happened, because it was merely something of service to me, um, was that young women, all women actually, um, started connecting with me and telling me their stories. And I realized in my vulnerability that I had kind of opened like the floodgates to this conversation about a lack of worthiness and self-loathing. And then I realized that it wasn't my story alone. And I had thought for years and years and years, decades, that how I felt about myself was entirely just me. Like I was stuck in this pit all by myself. And what I realized in the sharing, uh, all these women coming to me and young girls coming to me to share their stories that I wasn't alone. So one, that, that gave me this sense of community to help me rise. But two, it made me realize that there's this epidemic of self-loathing and it's not, it's not acceptable. It's, it's not fair. Like all these women who came to me who had stories of, um, something they didn't like about themselves or um, why they weren't good enough or, or how they were, you know, um, hiding under rocks instead of shining their light. And I thought they were beautiful, bold, brilliant women and they didn't see it. And then I realized I don't see it. And so it really, I healed with the community. And as that happened, I just felt this calling. I would go to bed at night thinking there's something here. There's, I, my journey here could be something that could help others. And as I went to bed at night thinking, 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 Girl in the Wild kind of just grew out of that and uh, it came to fruition. Um, I faced so many obstacles creating Girl in the Wild. <laughs> A million. It was the entire time and it still remains. It's, it's like running up and hitting a wall and, you know, flat face and falling down and getting back up again. Um, primarily it was money because I was, um, I was absolutely certain that this was something I did not want to charge for at all. And it felt right for me to say it would be free. And I also didn't want to cut any corners financially. I wanted it to be this epic experience. I wanted to have all of the, all of the expertise I needed to pull it off. I wanted like everything needed to be incredible because I, I, I believe the girls deserved it. And I believe I say it a lot that self-confidence is a right and we all deserve the tools and resources to have that. Um, and so financially, <laughs> I, uh, I was terrified. Everyone I talked to, they said, that's a beautiful idea, but why don't you just charge? People will pay. And, um, and I just, I, I couldn't do it. So um, financially, for sure. So I self-funded um, a lot of it until I could get some momentum to start talking about it. Um, and then other um, 
corporations and individuals and folks started donating, which was amazing. Um, so it eventually became, um, again, a community effort. Women would hear about it and tell me their stories and then donate, whether it was $5 or $500, it just all, like it was, it came together as a labor of love. Um, I definitely, uh, other challenges I faced were time. I work a full-time job, um, and Girl in the Wild is a full-time endeavor. Um, so I spent a lot of late nights and a lot of early mornings, but you know what? It also just felt right. I was exhausted, extremely exhausted all of last year, but it was exhaustion that felt right. Like I was doing it for something that, that just fueled my soul. And when our first camp happened, I realized it was it was absolutely the right way that I should have spent all that time. Um, resources for sure, and what I mean by resources are everything from um, staff and volunteers and um, marketing and PR and get, like everything you need to put a message out there. That was a challenge too. And again, because it started as like this one woman show, um, but again, once I just put myself out there women came and and some men too who are wonderful came and supported and said how can i help and so um we pulled it off by the skin of our teeth to be perfectly honest and you know we ended up with i think we had minus 434 dollars and i was so excited at the end of it and and we did that as a community effort with all of those challenges and we continue to hit challenges but i mean i've i've gotten to a point in my life where i just eat challenges for breakfast there were so many highlights. The whole thing, the whole thing, to be very honest, the Girl in the Wild Camp, the first one was just the highlight of my entire life. It is the best thing that I have ever been a part in creating. And what happened at camp was beyond what I ever envisioned. And so working towards it, I had an idea of what camp would be. And then camp was that times a million. And so some highlights were simply small things were simply our connections with the girls um you know i had one girl sophie who said to me after we we have these really intense vulnerable conversations every night after we have these big adventures and and we're we're going around the table and she said and she was crying and telling her story um and answering the questions that day and then afterwards at night we kind of had a gratitude session where we talked about what we were thankful for for the day and sophie said oh i'm so grateful for crying i haven't been able to cry about this for years and i just i mean gosh i have goosebumps thinking about it now i just we were all crying it was beautiful like there's just we watched girls crack crack wide open you know you know charlene was like the kindest gentlest most caring soul and she didn't have a clue and then when after um a week together we all kind of shared what we learned about each other and Charlene stood there while we all talked about the magic of who she is inside. And, and she just like, again, broke wide open and was like, Oh my gosh, I, I learned that I actually am a really good person. And you know, all these little things happened. And so there was, um, there was no real like monumental thing. This happened and it was just every girl at every point, had a little moment. Jade thought she couldn't cross the boulder field. And then when she got to the other side, she said, Oh my God, I did that. And I was good at it. And I said, yeah, yeah, you are. And these little things. And as I saw the progression of the girls over the week, doing more and more challenging, um, adventurous things, and also having deeper and deeper conversations, they all grew and they all connected in this most stunning way where they developed a sisterhood that I think is unbreakable. I mean, still today, um, they connect and they write letters to each other and they've got their, their groups and they, they just, they develop something far deeper, um, than just a surface level friendship that you kind of expect. You know, I would hear them talking at night, which is adorable. I was totally eavesdropping. Yeah. So the conversations at night went from day one, as I said, from being, um, you know, just really surface level, what's your favorite music, do you have a boyfriend, all that kind of stuff. And then day two, day three, day four, day five, it was exponentially deeper. These girls were talking about real things and connecting so vulnerably. They were like, they were saying things like, tell me about your parents' divorce. How did that make you feel? And how did you get through it? Because my, I think my parents are getting divorced. 
and this is how I feel. Um, tell me about that time when you were depressed because I've been cutting myself and I have depressive thoughts and I, I don't know how to deal with that and I feel alone. And they would say things like, you're not alone. You have us forever. And they would, they had these, like, they were just connecting so deeply about stuff that mattered. They talked about sexuality and they talked about um, being comfortable in their gender and all of these things that they hadn't shared before. And um, about anxiety with social media, I was saying like, do you ever feel like when you're left on red on Snapchat, it just breaks your heart? And they opened up what that felt like. And so um, again, highlights were just watching these girls see their worth, talk about the important things, be okay with having struggles and challenge and all those things and pushing their limits, both physically and emotionally. They just, I mean, I always say girls are going to rise. That's kind of become our, our kind of mantra or our tagline for girl in the wild. But these girls rose. They were like Phoenix is rising out of flames. It was amazing. Um, and in terms of your question about lowlights, Rebecca, really, there weren't any with camp. One of our mentors who came with us, Kylie, said to me afterwards, she said, are you concerned that that was too perfect, <laughs> that it could never be that great again? And I said, it was wonderful, wasn't it? Like it just, the girls made it what it was. The women who came there to support were wonderful. And certainly there were things like, we should have had more Tylenol on hand and um, definitely more blister repair. And you know, there's little lessons that we learned that can certainly make it um, better or, or more organized in the future. But as a whole, it was, um, as I said, it was just a highlight of my whole life. I was so proud of these girls. And I continue to watch them now through our connection, continue to rise and to share what they learned outward. And it's, it's beautiful. It's really that fusion of um, having those adventures and pushing yourself, you know, physically and, and in difficult situations and having challenges and the vulnerability aspect and really opening up the other challenges internally that I it's that fusion that I really think is um, the ticket to kind of helping us rise. And also again, just being open with each other, right? And so when you struggle together and you move through it together, you realize you're not alone and there's so much power in that. There's so much power in just women helping women. And you know, we had a mantra um, at camp that the girls came up with. We, on the first day, say, what are, what, like, what are the rules gonna be? What are we gonna live by here? Like, you tell us. And one of the first ones they said was, no lion left behind. And I, um, I called them lions. And so they, they, yeah, they said no lion left behind. So no matter what, whoever is the slowest, whoever is struggling, whoever, whatever, we're all in it together. And it was beautiful because whoever was last in any of the exercises never felt last because we were all just doing it. And so it's just really beautiful to have that fusion. So where I'm headed next with Girl in the Wild is Girl in the Wild everywhere. That's the plan. And so as many Girl in the Wild camps as possible all over Canada and then the U.S. and then the world. Like I believe in it so deeply. Um, and so that's our long-term goal. And I absolutely am not going to rest until I make that happen. Um, our short-term goal for 2020, we had one camp last year. So we're hoping to have three camps this year. Um, and also um, one paid women's camp that women have been asking us for that will fund the girls camp so um so we're working to make that happen that's our big objective to see if we can pull it off this year and and again i'm i'm um pretty stubborn so when i set a goal i go for it and we're gonna make it happen social media good or bad that's a tough one um for me and i think because i came into it as an adult with a with um pretty clear boundaries I actually curated my own feed. So I only followed people who I felt were putting good messages out there that made me feel good about myself. Um, and so I just didn't look at the other stuff, but I know what's out there. So for me, because I, I decided to to empower myself and just choose to follow those who are putting good messages out on Instagram. It actually, it felt very inspiring and motivating and, and I felt like I had community. Um, but certainly I think there is a lot um, on social media that is absolutely causing intense anxiety um, and incredible um, comparison, which I, I is between women, which is, 
um, really detrimental to self-worth and to, to building, you know, um, trust and friendships and all those kind of things. Um, it's a really tricky one. I think there's so much value in creating community and connecting with each other in a real, uh, in a real way, even though we're not together. Like, as I said, I've, I've connected with women all over the world and had these beautiful stories that are just like, we're talking to each other. Like we've been friends for years and I love them. And literally if they showed up in my town, I would hang out with them and invite them to my home. And it feels real. And it is real. I believe <laughs> they're not like my Insta friends. They're my friends. I just haven't met them in person. Um, and on the other side, there are bullies online and there are, are people who are, if you know, especially with teenage girls from the experiences I've heard from the girls that came to camp too, you know, when they're posting pictures online, there's lots of people who are putting them down for what they look like, what they're wearing, what they're doing. Um, social media is used in terms of bullying too. They were telling me, and I'm, I'm sure I just feel like I'm uncool because I'm, I'm so old now, but I had no idea this is happening, but how there's bullying in terms of everyone posting a picture of us at a party that you're not at, but tagging you or things like that so that you feel low about yourself. Um, and I don't know what the answer is on how to fix that. I, I really don't. And it's something I'm really curious about because I think there's a lot of good that can happen with social media and there's a lot of bad that is happening. And I think when you have this culture of like, you know, uh, diet culture, for instance, and people always showing like how, how you can be thinner and make your body better and do all these things and having that online and, and women and girls exposed to that. I just think it's poison. Um, so I'm not really answering your question. I just think it's social media for me has been wonderful because I really am my own gatekeeper. Um, and I am very quick to, to block, ignore, not pay attention to the bad stuff. And I'm really lucky that I have the capacity to do that, but I don't think it's that easy for everyone. And, um, and there's a lot of poison out there. So it's something to kind of mitigate and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure the way around it. In terms of being vulnerable and real, I just, I don't know that I found it difficult because I was just, in the beginning, I actually was just doing it for me. So I wasn't looking for a response or I, I didn't need anyone to validate me. I just needed to get it off my chest. And slowly, it took some time, but as I started to put it out there and again, people started to send comments. I'm like, oh, maybe I could actually say that today I'm struggling. Maybe I can say that. And it just helped alleviate the pressure and especially to realize again that other people are like yeah I struggle too yeah I like spend the day crying in bed for sure and it it felt good to 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 put myself out there and say hey I'm a human I'm a human and I have this really extraordinary life that is so much more than all of these squares and then what I realized is that I felt I owed it to myself not just people who follow me I owe it to myself to just be honest with what my life is. And my life is not sunshine and lollipops a hundred percent of the time. And in recognizing that and verbalizing that, it makes me feel so good. It makes me, it adds to like my mental health to be able to say I'm struggling today or today I hit a wall or, you know, I trained so hard for this race and I came in last place and that really stunk and I'm hurt by it. And I'm trying to move through these thoughts of self-worth because of it. And, and so it wasn't difficult to be open, but it, it took me some time, but it wasn't difficult. It just, I slowly, as I kind of, I kind of like dropped a little hints as I started, like things aren't that great, but they're going to be great. And then when people started to connect with me on those raw things, I felt I was in a safe place to say, this is who I am as a human, good and bad and ugly. And I'm just moving my way through this world, just like you. And sometimes I'm just tripping and falling flat on my face and, and that's okay. And it was that message that I think a lot of people said, felt, feel that I'm giving that message to them to say, it's okay. You can fall flat. It's fine. You're human. But really I'm giving the message to myself. Everything I post is really a message back to myself to remind myself that it is okay. How I'm showing up in the world is just great. Even on the stormy days.
we have a lot of pressure, right? <laughs> There's a lot and achieving goals and pressure kind of seem to go hand in hand, but it gets pretty ugly. Um, and I don't know what the answer is exactly to your question in terms of like, how do we, how do we keep, you know, moving forward um, without having this immense pressure from this monkey on our back? Um, but that being said, I really think the biggest thing to understand um, and that we talked to these girls about and something that I had to learn, especially as someone who didn't follow all the, the steps that I was told to follow, or rather I did follow them and then found out I was not happy at all and not fulfilled. Um, and then so I just broke it down and said, well, you know, screw this. I'm going to just do it my way. I think the big thing is to say what you feel is right. What you feel is right for you. And that means the expectations of other people have no regard on how you choose to live your life. And it's really hard. It is really hard to move through life thinking you might be disappointing someone and thinking that you're not doing the things you're supposed to do. But I can tell you that what you are supposed to do is whatever you feel like doing. <laughs> what feels right to you is what you're supposed to do. And sometimes that is the opposite of what feels right to everybody else. And that's totally fine. And what you'll find is when you're, you're following your purpose and doing what lights you up from within, all the other things fall into place. The success comes in the, whatever the things that you want. If you want money in the house and the babies and the marriage, cool, that'll come. But you have to have your inner joy first. You have to satiate that. And I think you know, I've, I talked to the girls too at camp about this idea of selfishness and um, selfish is kind of this ugly word, like doing things for yourself. But ultimately I, I totally agree, like believe in the deepest bit of my heart that in being selfish and choosing to serve what serves you first enables you to show up for others in such a big, bold, bright way. And I think I can attest to the fact that in my life, when I finally said, what does Kim want? What would serve me best? And then I did those things. I became a better friend and a better partner and a better daughter and a better community member and all of these things because I felt great. And so I had the capacity to give more. And so um, again, I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of dancing around your question because I don't know the exact answer, but the pressure is always going to be there. People are going to tell you they don't think what you're doing is right. They think it's crazy. They don't believe it. You should do this. You should do that. But the only thing you should do is what you want to do. Um, and that might be, you might fall flat on your face or you, you might succeed to your, your wildest dreams, but you need to do the things that feel right to you to live a life that, that is extraordinarily yours. Um, yeah. So just who cares what people think that's their stuff. You know, I think it's institutional change is really what's required. I think because the message is everywhere because that's how we've just, that's what we believe as a society in some wild and crazy way, but it's different now. I think we've learned a lot and it's time to kind of in those in educational institutions to kind of say, hold on a second at 18 years old, at 17 years old, do you really know what you want to do for the rest of your life? No, I can tell you I'm 41 years old and I have changed jobs, careers, probably 10 times at least. I, I have been, I've had a ton of money in the bank and I've had no money in the bank and I've, I've traveled all over the place and I've stayed home and my life is just, it's ebb and flow and everybody's is, and you're going to want different things at different times. And we have the capacity to like show up for ourselves and to, in, in any situation to figure it out. And so if I think if there was a little less structure and you have to have X and this plan and just say, like, what feels right to you? It, like go in that direction because that direction will lead you to, you know, to the next, to the next, the next. And we're just all, I always um, liken it to lily pads. Like we're lily padding our way through life and just frogs jumping onto the next one. And when this one doesn't serve us anymore, you go here and then here. And I don't know anyone in the history of my life who has ever had a straight point from A to B, ever. Um, and and I think we have to change how we kind of talk about that from up from um, again at an institutional level, um, so that kids aren't getting that message that they have to do this in this way because it's too much. It's too much.
gosh, what do I wish for all the girls who didn't get to come? And um, what I wish is, is self-confidence. And what I mean is just, I wish that we could all like literally every single girl. And again, every boy as well, but look in the mirror and say, I am enough as I am. I am great. This vessel has, has brought me to this point. I am showing up in the world and I don't have a single negative thing to say about myself. That's what I wish. I mean, it's interesting when we got applications for camp, I had a big cry because I thought after looking at all the videos, there were video applications. I thought, well, 100% of these girls deserve to come to camp. And, and I was like, I'm going to need to find $200,000. <laughs> I can't say no. We're going to have to rent more buses. But I had to say no. And it was really, really, really difficult because I didn't want the girls who did not come to camp to feel rejected. That's like how, it's probably why they're connecting with us in the first place. They're struggling with feeling rejected and not, not connecting with others and themselves. And so I made a video for each of the girls who um, did not um, get to come to camp. I'm really just told them almost this, like just, you are everything. And it's actually a, an actual fact that how you are showing up in the world is amazing and is right. And you will change, your body will change, your life will change, your career will change, everything will change. You are exceptional. And I want them to know that and, and not to show up in the world, you know, struggling with all sorts of ego. <laughs> I'm better than everyone else. It's actually, we're all exceptional. Every single person here is different. You know, a friend of mine said to me, and we put this on, on one of the girl in the wild postcards that we sell to fund camp. But she said to me once while we were, we were walking in the forest and I saw this like gnarly tree and I stopped it, like it took my breath away. It was, had all these burls and knots. It was amazing. And she saw it, took my breath away. And she said, wouldn't it be crazy if we expected of trees what we expect of people to be the same? She's like, the forest would cease to be beautiful. And Oh, that gives me goosebumps. It always gives me goosebumps because I'm like, you're right. We're all trying to be the same person. We're trying to be whatever that is, the cover model or the, the winner of the Nobel Peace Prize or whatever it is you're aspiring to. Just be you. Who you are is exceptional and it's right. It's just right. There's no denying it. And I, I want all of us to feel that way. And I think if we can, and gosh, that's a lofty goal, but if we can, imagine what's possible. If we're all walking through the world, not giving a single thought to any kind of negativity about ourselves, we'd be unstoppable.